Hi everybody, welcome back to the Lake Kentner House here in Galveston. I'm Janie and today I'm working on a window project. I'm in the dining room and I just took some screws out above the window that somebody had put in for security to keep them from opening. And this window wouldn't close all the way so it was slightly open. I've taken this out so I can lift the window up and I wasn't sure it was even going to work. These windows haven't been opened in a while but you can see it works pretty well but the bottom is bent down here. Let me show you. It's the old flashing or weather stripping, I don't know what you call it, that somebody put in and it's all bent and it stops the window from coming down. So I'm going to go get a chisel and a hammer and knock that out straight, clean this up and see if I can get this window to close all the way and use the lock that's still on the window to secure it instead of having to screw it in. And then because Ben and Jason are here with McNatt working on those parlor windows, I'm going to try to do the same thing and open this. It's always had this doggy slash cat door in it and I've been afraid to do anything with it because if it doesn't come down and seal up then I've got a problem but with them here I'm going to give it a try and if I mess it up too bad they're going to help me fix it. And then there were two except instead of counting down we're counting up so we're about to go three. How did that one do? This one I got, in a little, I got my little temporary piece on there a little tight. This window is also a little, the whole sash is just a little, I think, out of square or something. So. You can really see how that weight. <laughs> you put All one right. big one and one little one. After all his earlier trash talking about the jigsaw, Ben needed to use the jigsaw to take a lot of wood off of this under sill, I call it. This is the curved piece that sits directly on the brick ledge. And on this third window, it's much too high, so we had to take off quite a bit. Do you regret bad mapping the jigsaw? No. <laughs> it pains me very much to do this. <laughs> because the planer yeah. broke. This, so is my necessity, least, this is my least favorite way to do this. Necessity is the mother of invention. But this sits at an angle in the window and this lip or this was causing it not to sit yeah. flat, so we had to trim that off. Did it work? <laughs> So this looks like somebody was demonstrating how soft lead is. Right. Just yeah, I wonder if that was like... A, yeah, it looks like the hammer. Where's your hammer? Where's your hammer? Maybe they bent like one of those other ones. One of these is bent. Do you have a real hammer? Do you have a real yeah. hammer? Uh, you got the hammer on you? Yeah. Go ahead. Go look. How soft lead is. Doesn't take much. And these are walkthrough windows. I'm gonna oh, squat through. And if I opened it up all the way, it's full height. But I decided before I take a hammer to it, this is very soft. I'm gonna see if I can just use some pliers and bend it back and maybe do a little bit less damage to it. And it looks like it got bent because these hooks for the shutters got inside like that and then somebody slammed the window down and hit the hooks so we just need to turn the hooks out 
and get this back. I think it's just as simple as that. And I don't know. I may take this completely out. This is old weather stripping that was put on. And what they did is they actually cut a groove in the window sash to fit down over this. So if it's not perfectly straight, it may not go in that groove. So we still may have a problem. I wish I had some wide like metal bending pliers and I could grab and do the whole thing at once. It's pretty damaged. It's not too bad. I'm going to go get a broom and sweep all the grit and trash out of here. Oh, of course, the wind's going to blow it right into the house. The wind almost always blows in from the gulf. That's why houses on this side of Broadway were more desirable so that the breeze blew in through the front. I'm not sure why that mattered. It could blow in through the back, but still. Let's see if this bad boy will close. I won't really know if I'm successful until I get back up there and see if I can lock it. Higher. Get a little higher and get some leverage. Is not. This side is high. I don't know if there's some obstruction over there. Lift it and just check it again. This could be a long process. Okay, it appears to be very tight now to the bottom and the outside. This may be a little bit of a sag on the house in this direction. So I'm not going to be able to use the latch. I'll have to put that screw back in, but I'm going to put it in with the window pushed down a lot tighter so that we don't have gap. going on. Okay. I do not see any screws. Up here holding the window in. So that's interesting. definitely won't go up. It could be that they have it screwed from the outside. All right. This is going to be more of a problem. I'm going to have to go outside, take the plywood down, see if I can get the shutters unscrewed, and look at this from the other side. So this may be an all-day thing. It's kind of noisy today. Spring break. This is why I want it off. This is our last piece of plywood on the front. Now that they are doing those parlor alcove windows and that plywood will be gone, this is our last kind of big eyesore from the street. Unfortunately, they went a little bit screw crazy when they put these in. And they've been very difficult to get off. And they use big old long screws.
there was one hiding. Seven. These are dead, don't worry. Okay, I'm down, I think, to two. Phillips head that the head is messed up and sometimes you can use a square tip and it'll fit down in that messed up Phillips and come out but I don't know we'll see not gonna work for me today oh man I think I got a quarter turn out of that one let's see if I have a little bit bigger tip. Cross your fingers, say a prayer. Ah! Getting it. Let me show you. See how it's, it's messed up? But when it gets messed up, it makes that little square. And sometimes you get the right size square bit in there. I want to make sure my drill is lined up exactly straight so that I don't have any twisting on it. Got it. I think that's a little bit overkill on the screw size. There's another one. Oh. I'd prefer it. I'm gonna have to put y'all down because I'm gonna have to push really hard so it doesn't spin. Sorry. Okay, that's the way it always goes. There's always one screw that no matter what I do, no matter what trick I use, I can't get out. So I am just going to clear the way and pull it down and let the plywood break at that point. Fortunately, it's on the bottom, so the weight of the plywood will help do that. Oh. <laughs> and the fireplace is in the way. Okay. Gosh. Well, dang it. I'm not moving the fireplace chimney, that's for sure. Try to go this way. Oh, I think I got it. How many crazy screws I put into the shutters. It looks like a lot of them have been taken out. I think I see one up there. I see a couple at the bottom. Let's give it a shot. Oops. There's just one screw that won't come out, but I think I can go get my channel locks and twist him out and then hopefully they don't have this thing latched on the inside with those hooks or the slide bolt because then I won't I'm not sure what to do other than get a saw and cut that plywood out from the other side and pull it out and I did not show you putting this on I've shown them to you before they're like pliers but they have a locking mechanism so you can squeeze them really tight and they lock so you're not relying just on your hand strength there's a little physics in there with a lever to let you put more pressure I have 
sissy hands. I have no hand strength, so it was hard for me to get these on, and I hope they don't slip off, but it is going to hold that screw and turn it, so I should be able to get this thing out. And the more I get out, the fewer threads are in the wood, the easier it should be to turn. But when you're a weakling like me, vice grips come in handy, but it's still kind of hard for me to squeeze them shut because I have to be pretty tight and you do have to get over kind of that locking mechanism for them to really clamp. Now we'll see what happens with these windows. And then to release it, I'm just, I'm not strong enough. I'll do that later. Okay, Ben just told me he had something. Something, at, you're so tall. It's yeah. hard to get you and the thing in the film at the same we, time. Yeah, uh, so we were high. weighing the sash. Sash is, uh, you want to take a guess at how much the sash weighs with glass? 60 pounds. 80. I was a little surprised 80, by that. I picked it up. 80 pounds. Oh, the big one. The big, big one. one. Big the big one. one. Oh, no, I didn't. I, I rocked the big one up on my foot. But, uh, the small one probably is about 60. Okay, yeah. all right. So 80 for the big one. And so we are uh, got two of the weights, and I thought, well, surely looking at these, what, this one's heavier? Yes, it's longer. Hold on. It's just about an inch longer. Okay. Look fairly similar. Yeah. Put this one on there. Let me spin around. 38 pounds. 38 pounds for that one. Okay. No tricks. <laughs> that 41. one's 41. That's three pounds heavier. But it's longer. No, this is the shorter one. <laughs> Oh, that's the show. Oh, oh, my bad. My we bad. looked at it a few times and it, and it still it, comes out the same. Every is time. it um, fatter? Maybe a little bit. I mean, I don't see how else. Where's it, your calipers? <laughs> how else could it? I mean, but you're fatter. looking at it and you're measuring it. It, it all looks similar. Just weird is ones that we. Has it got an air bubble in it? <laughs> Maybe it has an air bubble in it when they poured the. Um, Mold. I don't see any other way around it. Got a little void in there somewhere. Void somewhere. I'm not going to cut it to cut see. Cut that open. Let's, <laughs> let's uh, slice it up. Interesting. But So how'd you weigh the window on that little scale? We'll put the scale down there. And just set it on it? Yeah. Oh, can we weigh the smaller one and see what yep. it weighs? Okay. Because the reason he's weighing them is the weights need to match pretty closely to the weight of the window because it holds it kind of an equilibrium. Wherever you open the window to, it should just stay. So he's going to steady it without... This is a little less than I thought. I thought it'd be closer to 60. 50, 51. Yeah. That makes more sense. I think if it was 60, I, if it was 60, I don't think I could have picked it up. For, for a sash this size, still, that's pretty heavy. Heavy. But the glass is... The glass is pretty thick. It's not as thick as the other window glass, but it's not uh, super thin either. Everything unscrewed and loose, and I was able to pick up the sash, but it feels very heavy. So I'm assuming the weights are intact, but I don't know. But I was afraid to pick it up and pull that plywood off that it would slam down real hard, because I don't know that I can hold up 80 pounds. like it's binding on something. Mm -hmm. There's no screws up there. Mm -hmm. It's loose. It's loose at the top. I mean, you can see it's loose at the top. And I think that'll just come out. If you hold that, I think I can just I was afraid it would slam down real hard. Oh wait, before you do that, let me kick my shutter and see if I can get it open. <laughs> come, on, come on, baby. No, they're not. This one's open and it's not latched, so this one should 
pop open. Mm. They're both up. As I can tell. And there are no screws outside. We got all the screws out. And they're loose at the top. All right, it did not slam down hard as I feared. It was hard to get down because one of the weights is off. But they got it down, we've got it seated. I will put a screw in the top so nobody will open it up. And then I'm going to wash it because there's my Dawn right there waiting for me. All right, they are test fitting the last window so they've been working with the pieces individually getting the sill set correctly getting the side pieces cut right getting the ears cut off so it will fit putting everything together let me put my side in there they first. get it in i didn't quite get it in and this is the problem that the front is bigger <laughs> than the back <laughs> yeah typically you so, can put a bottom and a top sash in from the inside or remove them from the inside not really that big of a deal but this you have to kind of push it to the outside of the window and then pull it bring pull it, it back. back to you yeah just because of the curve so yeah um, seems so, to be going a little quicker fit? what's that does it fit yeah you think are you happy? Say. It's got a, well, you can see it's got a little bit of a, I don't like the, the unevenness of the gaps. So they all have a um, big gap in the middle where somebody obviously stuck a screwdriver or something at one time and tried to pry it up. Yeah, they potentially. All have yeah. A, they all have yeah. a dent right there. And the, I think, uh, you know, just over time, the, the cypress is a little softer, and so it may wear too. So you think the sashes are made of cypress? Yeah. And, um, uh, Which is probably why they're still here and the rest of the window is not. Mm -hmm. But the, you know, the, strangely enough, the structure of a window would really be a bad thing to make cypress. Well, I mean, you can make the structure of it out of cypress, but cypress being such a lightweight wood wouldn't really take a lot of the other abuse that the sides or the sills of the window a lot of times. So it's rot proof and bug proof, but doesn't have the hardness yeah, or so the strength. Like, so I think there was like, reasons why they would use, they'd use cypress on the, you know, uh, your main part that would rot out, which would be your sash. And then, you know, but it was also probably more expensive too. So there's even always back, that, there's always that common element. You're not mm -hmm. going to use nice wood in the back of a piece of furniture. They'd use some kind of a, more junky wood mm -hmm. in that area. You're never going to see it. <clears throat> it's yeah. like somebody saying you need to finish the underside of a table. I was building the table once and they said, you didn't put finish on the underside of the table. And I'm like, start reading back through some of these books. Is this a thing? No, no. it is not. <laughs> Nobody ever took time to sand and finish and put a, a, a clear coat or a wax or anything on the underside of it. No. Hey. Maybe for the king of England or something. Maybe that well, was when your kids <laughs> when your kids make a fort and go under there, they're going to see it. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, are you going to scribe this one and yeah, I believe and so. Plane yeah. it off like yeah. you did the others. Yeah, we'll take a little off of it. And... So it doesn't need much; just a little smidge. So yeah. he's going to that one's a little bit more than a pencil. A little more than a pencil thick, and this is how we showed you before how. To scribe, this is the exact same process I used to scribe my form in the basement where my floor is wonky and I had to. I wish I had an actual scribe with me so I could show somebody Dude. with something more scientific well, than my is, little, is, the little stick I pick I up off the ground. I think this is how, how the real carpenters do it. I think it's just what you have.
but the line of the pencil is smooth and uniform with the bottom of the sill and then it transfers that mark up to the sash so when he planes that down and it, anytime, they have a nice fit anytime i scribe to a wall or scribe anything like this i'm always trying to make that line more or higher than i need so that you can way, see yeah, it and get up to it. Yeah, if I'm cutting up to it, you know, you could cut up to there and you can see that gap between where you're cutting and the line. How do you know where That's you were at? Tip. So they're going to put it back in. And like I said, they've done a lot of work on the sill and the, I don't know what you call it, the under sill, the second piece under, to get all the windows level. And it's difficult to go in because again that front edge is bigger and everything has Pull it to back fit just right just a little bit yeah i can't really get a good angle to show you i don't want to get up in their way i cut it pretty tight on the top i'm not sure it's actually no it looks fine i like where the bottom is it's just it's not it's not going to go in at the top oh oh it's too uh it's too tall yeah I just need to take another quarter inch off or so. I measured it, but you know. So they've got it out and they just need to shave a quarter inch or so off. So we gotta move that scaffold though. So they've got this one trimmed up <laughs> and ready to go. The scaffolding has been moved so they can safely get outside and work. Oh, there's an old tap con in there from holding up the plywood, I guess. Yeah. Just snapped right off. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's one way to Camera remove it. Done that too. Okay, Ben is so tall, I have a hard time getting him in the video. <laughs> well, you're tall too. Yeah. Not quite as, but pretty close. I'm going to tilt and twist and get it in there. And get it on this line that it's marked. Still kind of dangling just on that front there, but okay. Still, still catching. Catch <laughs> I didn't take a lot off. You took enough yeah. off. It. It's not, the sill's not anywhere close to being down flat. Your, your end's up at least an inch and a half. Yeah, you're not even close to being down on the base. There you go. As we mentioned in the last video, getting these windows in and getting them even across so that they are level from window to window to window has been very difficult because originally they were put in place and the mortar was put around the frame. We still have leftover mortar on these bricks that was there from the original window and instead of taking it out and starting over, Ben is actually shaping the bottom of that lower sill to fit that mortar that's already there. And he's had to take this window in and out several times to do that because you can always remove a little more wood, but if you remove too much, it's hard to put back. So it's just a matter of shaving some off, putting it in, checking it out, shaving it off, putting it in, checking it out until he gets it the way he wants it. So you're going to take it off the bottom of the sill? Yeah, just a sub piece here. 
so it's not actually so we're not taking anything off the air. Yeah. So you're gonna, woo, we're gonna get a haircut. That's how <laughs> I mean if you're at zero there. Yeah. That's and it so it humps in the middle. Yeah, and it's just kind of do 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 rocking right there too, which yeah. isn't really great either. Yeah. Okay. I'd much rather not transfer the weight just in one little tiny spot, little spot so in the point, middle. Point. with the jigsaw and just taking the hand plane, just smooth it out around the corner a bit. Going back for the, go. for the sixth time. <laughs> yeah, I think there's only third time on this one. Though. Third time on this one? <laughs> Okay. It's a story and he's sticking to it. Who's counting? Except the record that we're only up and down two or three times that the other one. Yeah. The middle one. The middle one went in easy. Yeah, it was about at least. Easy relatively yeah. speaking. Easy is a relative term, but I can tell you nothing has been easy about getting these windows installed. It has been a slow, difficult process with lots of fitting and refitting and refitting again. It is tedious and these guys from McNett Contracting are so professional. They never hurry. They never cut corners. They are so precise and accurate in their work and we could not be more thrilled to have these windows back in place. So that wraps up this week here at the Lee Kempner House. Thanks for watching. As always, we really appreciate your support. And to those of you who have been going to our website and purchasing items from our store or making a donation, thank you very much. We are an all-volunteer organization, so all of your funds go directly to the restoration of the house. That's what we use to pay for these craftsmen and the supplies and the materials we use. So again, thank you from the bottom of our heart. You are helping us save this incredible house.